Yo, what up? It's your boys. Bingo, here for boingo. Episode fifty-eight of the Joystick Show, nearing sixty. Jeez, we're yeah. fucking old, bro. Damn, bro, we're about to retire. <laughs> yeah, man. In terms of like, if we're looking at it per year, you know. Yeah, right. Uh, but luckily, this is weekly, so. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Were you gonna say first off? I know I had a whole <laughs> intro. I had a whole thing planned in my head, and then that whole like fucking talking about retiring and being old shit just threw me off. I was gonna say it is October first when we are recording this episode. Yeah. You'll be seeing it a little later than that, oh, but yeah. we are celebrating the month of October with a very spooky scented candle that Joey oh, yeah. got us, courtesy of our resident spooky boy yeah shout out to the fall honestly uh, it's just me and dylan here today yeah. jerry can't make it and joey actually went all the way to orlando florida to universal studios <laughs> yeah. just to ride the fast and furious only ride. that one no yeah, other just, ride just to see like yeah. you know if we were right mm-hmm. sure enough yeah mm-hmm. what the fuck is going on I, I, I remember I was like, Joey was like sending like a video and I thought it was like, cause sometimes Joey will send a video and it'll just be some random shit that I don't care about. Yeah. But this was like, Joey put that in the chat and I was like, well, like I realized what it thank was immediately so and I'm like, thank you, Joey. And like, I did the math too. So real quick, before we go any further, I actually want to get the name of this candle so I can properly shout out the boy. Oh. It's called Haunted Nights. You can't get any more fucking spooky yeah but that. usually what they do is they're like bath and body works I'll, I'll let you in on a little secret they just rename a fucking they scent. just this scent smells a lot like two scents mixed together that's what i think it is oh, or it's I like see. just like because it's like one of their like cologne kind of scents uh-huh. like a lot of like mah- slap a skeleton label on mm-hmm. it i mean no biggie whatever yeah. but uh point is Thank joey's you, actually joey. in florida for the halloween horror yeah. nights that they do there and if you watch our show joey's very much into halloween and yeah. just everything the scary. one that he went to actually does like like we'll put a clip of him laughing at Vin Diesel in a helicopter. <laughs> but um, like when I went, it was like uh, it was like Purge themed. Oh which yeah, was, yeah, which yeah. was very cool. But like people just like re like uh, like swinging stuff at you, you know, like just like the people that work there, you know, and they're just wearing like you know like the light up mask, yeah, and they're just like swinging nunchucks at me. I'm like, bro, it's like. 7 p.m. Oh man, speaking of that, I read this story about like Mad Random, but it was like a fucking story about a uh, kid who went to a haunted house with his, like, I think his family. And one of the like actors was has like a knife or whatever, and he's like, yeah. he scared the kid, but the kid was like, you don't scare me. And he was like, why not? And the kid is like, because that's not a real knife, it's fake. And then the guy, it was a real knife, and the actor, like, uh, like he wasn't allowed to switch it but he did switch it and he started stabbing the floor and accidentally stabbed the kid's foot <laughs> like he slashed his toe yeah so now he like they got major trouble and it's like you're a fucking idiot bro like yeah not only did you swap a real weapon for a fake weapon at a haunted house like you actively went towards a fucking child yeah. with it and honestly what you have to do in that situation is find an adult and stab them <laughs> as demonstration like what because like it would been or like stab find something else to stab because you would wreck that kid shit. You would scare him. So, no, no, listen, like, really. If you were, like, uh, someone that was meant to scare people, yeah, yeah, yeah. and that kid's like, that's not a real knife, and then you just grabbed, like, a pillow and just made, like, eight holes in it, and, like, that's you. Like, that kid's going, that kid's fucking want to go home. Dylan, man. you're a little horrifying, bro. <laughs> you, you got a little psycho with Look, that. Look, if you got your job is to scare, right? Yeah. So you got to do it. Okay. <laughs> You, you fucking go, buddy. I think this would be a good time to tell people that if they haven't, make sure to subscribe. <laughs> make sure to like. Yeah, and make sure to comment some shit, which, will, I mean... We'll, we'll get to that. Yeah, we'll find some... I think I have an idea, but, you know. I mean, in, in going with how these shows typically fall through, what have you been up to, my friend? Yeah, I've just been, uh, you know, being a slave to the school system. Mm-hmm. Uh, I found out something really interesting about CUNY, which is, like, kind of fucked up, is that you have to be vaccinated, which is like a lot of things in New York City. Yeah. That's like a main theme throughout the past week or two, mm-hmm. especially with New York here. Mandates but, galore. Yeah. But, you know, everyone's, apparently I've heard everyone agrees on everything. Mm-hmm. Like there are, everyone agrees with everything and everyone's like, you know what, this is good, right? But whatever. The fuck are you talking about? Do we live in the same place? <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking. Oh, okay. I'm being, I'm being Dylan's sarcastic. being sarcastic, yeah, guys. Yeah, that yeah. one went over my head. Yeah, 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 yeah. But, um, at... CUNY, even if you're taking like fully online, you still have to get it. Yeah. Which I, at first, I just, uh, yeah, it, I, I disagreed with that because I'm like, all right, that's a little too far. That's but, like the point. Yeah. Right? That, that you're giving, you know, you can't deny people 
education, and it's like they already yeah. you know and they already paid for it right and it's like you're not giving them a refund so but then i was talking with someone and they said it was because you get access to all the shit so they would be closing you off from the entire campus and i was like that awesome that makes sense but still kind of you know it, and also i talked with like an administrative person and they were like it's easier to keep track of and I i'm guess. like yeah and i'm like that's also the main theme of it throughout it's like it's much easier if, if you if you there's no worry you're good you know mm-hmm. if everything's over one roof but yeah i've just been doing that watching some horror youtube to get into like the halloween yeah. mood a lot of you know a lot of it ends up just being like uh like ARG type stuff. Like you know what ARGs are? I do not. Okay, so it's basically just like um like have you heard of Cicada 3301? No, is ARG the thing that the pirates say? Arg. <laughs> that's that's a good one. That's really good. No, it's like um so like Cicada 3301, it was a thing years ago where it'd be like online puzzles and ciphers okay. that were like on the dark web and it would lead you on like a scavenger hunt. Huh. And like the... the Some m- Jose shit right Yeah, yeah, there. yeah. So it was like mega interesting. And, and every year on the same date at midnight, they would post the thing and be like, all right, here are all the puzzles and like one would lead to another. It was yeah, really cool. Yeah. But the conspiracy around it was that it was actually the CIA hiring people. Oh, And, like, the yeah, people yeah, that yeah, would yeah. like solve, like, the top three would like get abducted or whatever. Crazy. And like the, but... That that's not how the real world works. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. that, it was literally it's a game. It's not Squid Game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I gotta watch. That. I, I started watching it, but it's all right. Yeah, <laughs> I like the memes, obviously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah that are coming through it. Um, what was I talking about? <laughs> Skater three three zero one. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. Puzzles. So yeah, the ARG. So essentially, there's like hundreds of these where it'll be like a thing that will look like a conspiracy or uh-huh. it'll look like a real story but it'll just turn out to be like a game i see so a lot of these horror youtubers they'll they'll be like there's a person missing and they'll make it like creepy for like 30 minutes uh... and at the end of the video it's like oh it's a game and they're like marketing this product <laughs> it's like oh fuck this dude this sucks so then i have to like look to see which ones are like actually spooky yeah. and like which are like actually good which aren't really good for like nighttime uh-huh but like earlier in the nighttime they're good yeah they're not they're not like 1 a.m good because yeah, it's yeah. like i'm trying to fucking sleep yeah i'm not gonna be able to sleep if it's like there's someone staring at you <laughs> like some shit like that and you're like oh well i'm not i'm not I'll going to stay up for a bit yeah yeah i'm up to 3 a.m you know but you know if it's like earlier like 9 10 o'clock at night you could watch a scary movie and not be horrified yeah, at yeah, that time yeah yeah you got to be strategic with when you watch you know scary shit mm-hmm. it's like I, my dad's one of my dad's favorite movies very, very weirdly enough is the exorcist and uh, he watched it when he was younger, like when that movie first came out, and it like scarred him. And then, movie, yeah. yeah, and then when I think, I don't remember if it was the 20 or 30 year anniversary, it had to be the 20 maybe. But point is, they I mean, did, that uh, movie came out in the 70s. Maybe 30 then. Yeah. So they had like a 30 year 75. anniversary edition that came out, and my dad hadn't seen it since he was younger. So he decided to rent it at the video store, which is an old fashioned. And he sentence. probably hyped the fuck out of it, didn't he? And he went down here into this basement of like fucking 20 plus years ago when this basement yeah. was very different. Mm-hmm. And he watched it here at 12 at night in the darkness. And he, it's still one of my dad's. He's like, oh, so horrified. And it's like, well, no fucking shit. You watch like the thing you're most terrified by yourself in the basement. <laughs> like some scarring trauma yeah, shit. Yeah. Like, <laughs> And I don't know if you've ever been down here in the basement in the dark. It's not fun. No, it's, it's like you can't it's horrifying see, yeah. low key. It's mm-hmm. really bright right now because of the studio lighting and shit. Mm-hmm. But, but normal, like with no lights. I do that thing since I live here because like the laundry room is here. So like I'll have to come down to get clothes and stuff and then I'll turn off the light and then <laughs> zip upstairs because, you know, the monster's going to grab your yeah, heel. You can't turn around. Man. Yeah, yeah. All the worst is like you hear a noise after that, like something drops. Bro, you're running at that point. Oh, man. Yeah. What have you been up to? I'm sure you've been up to some shit. I uh, I went on the subway for the first time. Yeah, because it's this is my problem. So like every not to cut you off, which I am, but every Friday I take the subway. Uh huh. That's my or you know I no, yeah, in some yeah, form. Fridays your uh is your out in the world. Yeah, day. yeah 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 yeah. And I'm come here, so I'm not home for like 14 hours. Yeah. But you see the weirdest fucking people on the subway, and I didn't want to talk about it because last we week I went the on the subway, train, yeah. but now you went on the train, so now you get to talk about your. Time I mean, I didn't shit. have any weird uh, sad, stories sad. or anything like that. I think it was just more like a nostalgia thing. Yeah. Cause it, it oh, was, yeah. I grew up with the train, so I, I feel that 100%. To put it into perspective, the last time that I got on the subway was early March of 2020. Okay. So it was literally a year and a half that yeah, I had almost, been on the yeah. subway. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. 
So fucking uh, took the A train into the city because me and my girlfriend went to go see the Lion King on Broadway. Yeah. That was pretty cool. Before I mm-hmm. get to that, uh, yeah, the A train it was just cool because like that was this the the same route I used to work near Times Square, so it was the same route that I would go into work. Mm-hmm. So it was just kind of cool to like be in my like the corner seat on the a train and try to like remember all the names of the stops and i fucking nailed it oh of course yeah i mean i grew up with that but yeah i, I feel 100 yeah, percent. Yeah, yeah you go past them you're like that's right and then even like uh even getting off like when i was in the city i hadn't i've driven in the city since you know like the covid shutdowns when i've been like driving into jersey and shit like that but i hadn't really like walked through the city yeah in, like, i mean that it's long. just it's just it's a it's always like a cool vibe because it's like that's the shit that would get you as a child yeah when like you would walk from the subway Upstairs. and then you you would look yeah. and then it's just giant buildings and you're like, what uh, the fuck? No, I like I had that exact same feeling. It was funny because I met up with my girlfriend at her at her job and then we were walking down Eighth Avenue going to grab a bite and I was just mm-hmm. like she was talking to me and I was listening to her, but as I was listening to her, I was just like looking behind me and shit. And she's like, what are you looking at? And then she like kind of realized it and she was like, oh, you haven't been here in a long yeah. time. And I was like, yeah, it's just yeah. kind of crazy. That happened to me like in my, fir- my first time back at school too because like I'm familiar with that area because I used mm-hmm. to hang out in that area. So when I went back to school, I was like, oh, I know this place. Yeah. But things were different because I hadn't been there in like three Oh, years. yeah, so many businesses closed down. Mm-hmm. My favorite pizza place is closed. I was mm-hmm. so upset. That was like literally where I used to get lunch every day in film school. Rip. Mm-hmm. And I was even thinking about it because I knew we were going to go eat. And in the back of my head, I was like, oh, I could offer it as like a suggestion. And we passed by it. And I saw the sign is still there. So I was like, oh, my spot. And then you look in and it's like for lease mm. and there's nothing in there. It's yeah. like, oh, my God. Rips to the pizza. Yeah, man. but I went to go see The Lion King on Broadway. Yeah, that's actually one of the, that is, in fact, that is the only show I've seen on Broadway. Oh, really? I haven't seen any other show. You want to hear something crazy? Yeah. Uh. Besides the fact that it is the longest running show on Broadway, yeah. which I thought is very cool. Oh yeah, hell yeah. Uh, it's crazy enough, we went to go see it uh, on Wednesday. Mm-hmm. I think Tuesday is when Broadway, like, well, at least when the Disney shows opened up on Broadway, like Lion King and Aladdin. Yeah. The night that we went to go see Lion King, Aladdin got canceled. Wow. For COVID restrictions. And they reopened it like two days later. Oh, okay. But we were like super lucky that that wasn't also us because yeah. it was literally the exact same night. And the craziest part was after we got back from the city, I, my parents were downstairs watching uh, the news. And that, that was mm-hmm. what was on the news. It was literally right in front of the Minskoff Theater where we were just at. Mm-hmm. And it was like people interviewing like the people who went to go watch Aladdin. But and then, couldn't like, go. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And even crazier than that, like the tickets the show was a gift it was an anniversary present for my girlfriend yeah uh because we like going to shows and stuff and obviously since we're always been, reopened yeah been gone we haven't been able to go in a long time and we went to go see aladdin i was like one of the last ones we saw before the shutdown mm-hmm. but uh she got the tickets like you know last week maybe Oh, cool. So uh, we were just we went to go get drinks at the concession stand and the guy's like making small talk with us. And he's like, you guys excited for the show? And we're like, yeah, for sure. And he's like, how long have you had your tickets? And my girlfriend was like, oh, we got them like three days ago. And the guy was like, you got them three days ago? And she's like, yeah. And he's like, everybody I've asked so far has had them for like a year, yeah, and they've six been waiting, months. Yeah. And I was like, geez. Like, yeah, and they've been waiting that's for That's insane. It. Uh-huh. I feel like we just kind of snuck in low key. Like I, I think it was my brother who had tickets for Dan and Shay mm-hmm. that he got us for his girlfriend <laughs> like two years, like a year and yeah. a half ago. Like it was like right beginning of COVID. Mm-hmm. So then like they couldn't even go. That's and crazy. then it got canceled. It got suspended, suspended. Wow. And then finally it was like last week or something. And, uh. And yeah, the show was incredible. It was, mm-hmm. uh, it, the, like I said earlier, The Lion King is it's the longest running show on Broadway, 20 Hell plus yeah. years. But like when I was younger, The Lion King was like not the greatest show on Broadway, but for me, The Lion King was like the biggest. The you know pinnacle. I mean? Yeah, you know what yeah. I mean? So the fact that I had never seen it, it low key, it didn't bother me, but I, it's like one of those things that I wanted to cross off yeah, the yeah, list. Yeah, 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 yeah. So when I heard that we were going, I was like, this is actually fucking sick because mm-hmm. I've been alive in the city practically the entire lifetime of the show and I still haven't gotten the chance to see it. Yeah, I want to go to more. And what's actually sure. really cool is my parents went to go see the show the opening year. And they owe to this day. They always talk about like how great it was, and imagine like back then when they didn't have all the technical advancements and that they just, have now. Oh my god! And I just seeing it now, so it was just honestly speaking, it made me cry. Like yeah. not ball, but I was like tearing up. Yeah, it's a and it wasn't moment. even like uh, it wasn't even like Mufasa's death. Spoiler alert for fucking anybody who needs a Lion King spoiler alert. But I was sitting there thinking like 
is the sad just, stuff gonna make me cry? But it was just like the just, grandness. Yeah, of yeah, it. just like the just the the beauty. You hear and the like, voices. Yeah, the sen- sentimental talent. Oh, for sure, or bro. Like I was literally there. Like they're singing a circle of life, and I'm just there. Like holy fuck! Like I had to breathe. I was like, yeah, oh my yeah, God. yeah, 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 like, yeah, yeah, for sure. Like I've even noticed like movies doing that to me lately, where I'm like, ooh, like that hit me a little, that yeah. hit me a little hard, you know? It was a it was a great experience. I was really happy to to go check out another Broadway show. Yeah. And I think I got the bug. I think I gotta check one out again. Mm-hmm. I'm, de- I definitely. That's like a thing I wanna, cause I'm like I'm going to a lot of concerts now. Mm-hmm. Like the next like two weeks, I think I'm going to four concerts, maybe five. To put this into perspective, before Dylan goes further, I was just telling Betta about this. Mm-hmm. She was like, "How do you plan like your podcast days with Dylan?" And I'm like, "Usually it's like, oh, are you free Friday, Saturday?" But then I told her I was like, "Dylan booked like 19 concerts." Yeah. So now I'm just kind of like, "When do you not have a concert?" Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, like honestly, like you know, we'll talk about this after. Yeah, obviously, that's like some personal shit, right? Like, but uh, yeah, like, I definitely want to go to more like live events, uh-huh. without a doubt. Live events are very cool. Mm-hmm. I didn't know concerts were a personal conversation. No, I meant like when we'll do the podcast next. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's what I meant. Like, oh, you know, we can't let people in on like how we plan. Oh, what it's the very, fuck? I literally, that was the fun. first thing I said. I <laughs> I text Dylan and I'm like Friday or Saturday, and he's like Friday, and I'm like, all right, and that's, <laughs> that's when we do the goes. podcast. And then you know, I wish it was grander. I wish we'll we had throw a, in a Thursday every once in a while. You, you know, know what the funniest thing about that is? We are literally Team Joystick and Team Joystick. Like it's four of us, but like we don't even have like a chat for that. I literally just text Dylan separately. We used to. <laughs> Dylan messages me about it, and then I'm like, all right, guys, I'll tell everyone else. I'll tell everybody else. <laughs> You think we'd have this shit a little more? Yeah, organized, you think but... we'd have like a, a a Discord with eight different channels, yeah, each yeah, right. for each show. Everyone's got their own different custom icon. No, for, I'm fucking, afraid not. No, it's, it's DMs on Instagram. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> Shoutouts to our chat. Yeah. Uh, Which we have to change the name. We used to change the name a lot more lately. Yeah. We haven't changed it. I'm gonna change it actually. Well, Jose found out like it was funny because Jose was at like my house two or three weeks ago. Mm-hmm. And he was talking about how, because we used to talk on the Facebook Messenger app, mm-hmm. and now we have an Instagram chat. But he was saying how, like, the only thing that he missed about the Facebook chat was that you could put a chat picture. Yeah. And as he was saying that, he was going through the Instagram chat settings and found out that there was an update and you can do it Dude, now. No. So Jose got so fucking excited. <laughs> I don't know what it is, but, but I'm gonna the change chat it. name and the chat picture is, like, one of Jose's favorite things in life. Like, it brings him so much Yeah, yeah, joy. yeah. I'm going to change it now. You I'm, should. I'm going to fucking put him to shame and be like, hey, no, Jose, this is, this is it now. You know what it is right now? No, I don't. It's uh, it's nun cheese left beef. <laughs> yeah, that's all right. It's fine. A great meme, and I think a great segue into yeah. something that you have planned for us today. Yeah, I do. I definitely do. Mm-hmm. So cue the cue the music. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like okay. yeah. No, yeah. So uh, the first thing, so I have a trivia segment yeah. that I have planned. Does it have a name? Yeah. So I was thinking about the name, right? And I was like, oh, what if I do something? You know, it's about memes. as That's why it says memes there. For so life. I was like, what if I did something like, how do you meme? You yeah. know, something like that. But, you know, that's what do you mean? What that's, do you mean? Yeah. That's trademarked. Yeah. So I was like, I can't do that. Yeah. And I was like, well, what if I do know your meme? That's, that's, a- that's also a website that's trademarked. Yeah. Uh, so now we're going to spell it differently. <laughs> so it's going to be no with no W. Okay. And then your meme. But should I do you are yeah, meme? Got yeah. it. So it's no your meme. Got but, it. you know, stylized all cool. Man, our original content yeah. is on fire. So original content. So pull up that uh, bad boy of a slideshow that I have. You got it, sir. And we're going we're gonna to do some trivia. So to explain how the format works, we got six questions, right? So each one, well, you'll have five choices. You'll see why you have five choices. Mm-hmm. Um, and essentially, you'll react to the meme, mm-hmm. and then you know they try know. to get all of them right. Got it. If th- you know there was a plan to have someone like Jerry here, I know, yeah, to have like you know, and I have tiebreaker questions, but maybe I'll even throw those in as for extra, sure. You That's know? fun. Yeah. See how Bobby does. Hell yeah! All right, so do I hit space now? sure it's funny because i'm like behind the computer yeah yeah yeah, yeah of course segment. of course once we once we finalize it just move on to the next one when you're ready right? ready so yeah. i hit it yeah all right there we go oh so this is the first meme so this what one's classic a classic right yeah. here so i was like trying to find like a fu- like a funny one yeah and i found a couple of good crossover ones but this is the only one that made me 
I don't know why. <laughs> but this one, like, I was we like, should take a second to preface that Dylan, and then to a little bit further of an extent, our group. But Dylan specifically yeah. has a very interesting sense of humor yeah. that and, I share. And today, I essentially like I already had all of these picked out. Yeah. But I wanted to make sure if like I had like a list of like twenty, uh-huh. and I was like, I want to make trivia questions about like six of these. Yeah. So I was just looking at phones all day, di- uh, looking at memes on my phone all day during class. Yeah. And I was just like giggling by myself the whole time and then i found that one about martin luther that i put yeah, in the chat yeah, 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 which is just like which is just an incredible one all right so yeah you ready yep all right so this meme originates from the lord of the rings series yep. with a character played by sean bean mm-hmm. what is this character's name I am a movie guy, and I've seen many a movie, but I have not... Okay, I'll get... Really gladly, you get five choices, all right? Thank God. So, A, Boromir. Okay. B, Elrond. Uh-huh. C, Haldir. Uh-huh. D, Damron. Uh-huh. E, Steve. <laughs> so, I was really hoping that it would be like, you know, like Gandalf. <laughs> it's Smeagol. Well, the giant well, eye on fire. Well, well that's the it. well, that's the thing, because then you would be able to eliminate it and be like, "That's obviously so not." So I'm gonna go ahead and eliminate Steve. Real quick. <laughs> Could you just give me A through D real quick? So, so, so I'll give you A. It's like okay, like you it's have a, a Boromir, right? Bor- Boromir. Boromir. Elrond. Elrond. Haldir. Haldir. Damron. Damron. I'm gonna go with Boromir. I feel okay. right. Okay. You are correct. Yes. Boromir. Okay. And he is one does not simply walk into more of them. Got it. Yeah, big, yeah. You know, saying that you also Sean Bond. Yeah, <laughs> she she Bean, she bro. Bean. <laughs> <laughs> the homie. Uh, yeah. So essentially, you know, big series, but um, yeah. Glad you got that. One. Thank you. Um, you have a lifeline, by the way. I'm gonna give you a lifeline. Mm-hmm. If you find one that is too difficult, yep. you can eliminate one of the. Ooh. Can, yeah. Yo, this is... You can is that the one. first lifeline? Yeah, that is a lifeline. On the Team Joystick Podcast? Yeah. The second one? Not the name of the show. If your dad was home, if, if your dad was home, that'd be the second phone lifeline. Phone a friend? Yeah, yeah, that'd be your phone. All right. So, uh... You ready for the next one? Go ahead. Yeah. Ready. Ooh, yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so this is a combo. I, I tried... I tried... I tried throwing in several combos, right? So, okay. So... Uh, yes, we have. I just want to point out. Yes, this is the classic uh, meme, confused meme. Yeah. But I see you threw in your throat fuck Thursday. I had. I, I, I. This was in my gallery, and I yeah. said I had this. This one has to make it. And this is. Uh, there's one account specifically that every Thursday, the admin makes memes surrounding a holiday that yeah. this meet that they made up. Throw fuck Thursday. Yeah. A, thir- a, a holiday Dylan celebrates in our chat every week. I sh- I share a meme or two. It goes past that, Dylan. We do full on podcasts, and you'll just be like, "Hey guys, it's Throw Fuck Thursday," or like shit like that, and like you know what I mean. It's the holiday. Yeah. It is. It's a- yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, I, I wish I could celebrate, you know, uh, uh, you know, Foreskin Friday <laughs> or like uh, <laughs> Saline Saturday. You know, like I, I, I wish I could do those, yeah. but I really can't. Got gotcha. you. You ready for uh, you ready for trivia surrounding this? Let's go. All right. This original meme format. Stems from a telenovela actress mm-hmm. known for making strange faces. Uh huh. What is this country? This show's country of origin. A. Argentina. Okay. B. Brazil. Uh huh. C. Chile. Uh huh. D. Bolivia. Okay. E. People's Republic of China. <laughs> As you can yeah, use a lifeline to remove the. <laughs> So you can see, no. so you can see E okay. is not... He's a fun one. E, e, is, e does not need to I exist. like E. Yeah. e I, I'm enjoying E. <laughs> Speaking of memes. Yeah, E. Oh, uh, um, man. Uh, I'm, I don't think it's Chile. I don't think it's Brazil. I feel like it's Argentina or Bolivia. And part of... What, what, does, she, what, what does she look like? This is from the show. This is like she. This is the show that she's like a star in. Got it. And she's like known for like them just like panning in on her face. Yeah. And she just does some, you know, yeah. this. I'm gonna say Bolivia. Sadly, the answer is Brazil. Brazil, damn it. Yeah. Because when you you don't think Portuguese, you know, like yeah. it's a little bit of a throw off. That's interesting. Yeah. Though. I always kind of thought that was a 
I thought that was an American soap opera. Yeah, I thought that's what I thought too. Because you look at yeah, it, it looks like, exactly yeah, yeah. like an American soap exactly. opera. And then I'm like, wait, telenovelas are just mm -hmm. Spanish soap opera. I was like, oh, okay, yeah, sure, yeah. that makes sense. You ready so, for the next one? Yeah, go ahead. I'll, I'll hit the space bar, right? Yeah. Boom, what do we got? Alright. Oh, and another absolute If classic. Jerry were here, he would be very happy. Yeah, There's of, a huge of sign course. You want, to read, you want to read it? Yep. Are you doing math problems for fun? Yeah, I love being mentally challenged. Well, I'm glad you've come to terms with it. Thanks. <laughs> Great. What I will say is this has got to be actually one of, like... The less worse cyanide. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, and know, not in terms of quality, like they're very funny, but they usually go, you know, very they, blunt with them. They go overboard, and yeah. there's also, I believe, I don't know if they do like a whole week now, or they do like a special day mm -hmm. where it's just sad. Yeah. It's not like funny. It's just like it ends, and it's like, oh, it's like some tre terrible thing, and then it ends. Shit makes you think about. Yeah, yeah, and it's like, whoa! I did not expect that to see be. that one coming. Yeah. But so, yeah, let's go. We got from this trivia this department for sure. All right, so you know the name of the comic, Sign right? Sign of Happiness. Sign of Happiness is one of the longest running daily comics on the internet. What year did it start? Oh man. Yeah. So two thousand and one. Okay. Two thousand and three. Uh huh. Two thousand and five. Uh huh. Two thousand and eight. And three thousand and late. Got it. <laughs> By the way, it, it, that's the correct answer. It's 3,000 and late. That's the right answer. <laughs> oh my god. That one got me. Yeah, of course. Oh man. Alright, can you repeat just the. So it's every other. I did every other for so the first time. 2001, 2003, 2005, 2008. 8. And then late. Okay. Yeah. So 1358. Yeah. Okay. Let me think about it. Because mm -hmm. it's old. But like, like, how I'm, old is it? You if know? I'm gonna be honest, I actually would have guessed like 2010. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that, it goes way back, and also the website goes back. I'm not gonna tell you it, but the website is actually earlier. Like they made the website, and then two months later they were like, "Well, what do we do a comic?" You know? Man, I go with 2005. 2005 is correct. Ooh, the website was started in the end of 2004, and then 2005. Was when the first comic was made. Wow, I didn't have no idea it goes that far back. And it's daily, every every time. That's insane. So they've been doing uh, one every single time. Yeah. And they're mostly all funny, you know. Yeah, for sure. Uh, but a oh, bonus. Do you remember the name of the website? No. Ooh, I should have used that one. I what I got you, Explosum.net. Explosum. Explosum. Yeah. I don't know. What it's I don't know either. I did. I did Explosum, but I, it might be Explosum. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, I, I actually, well, funny enough. There was a, a long time, very, very long time ago, where um, me, Joey, and Jerry had the Mr. Joystick Instagram that we still use to this day, yeah. and we shared it together. Oh, I remember that, yeah, the good old days. So one of Jerry's contributions to, like, the followers or whatever, like, people we followed yeah. was expo Exposal. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that's, like, the only reason that I know, like, a lot about cyanide and happiness and stuff like that, because Jerry's a really mm -hmm. big fan of them and shit like that. And I feel like everyone always has a one friend that's really into it. Or, like, a friend that's really into Calvin and Hobbes, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. something like and that. And I think, you know, it's funny, Andy's really into that, I think. Yeah. Or one of those comic strips. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it makes sense, yeah. Oh, you show. watch the show, Andy. Yeah, yeah. so, Andy, tell us in the comments. And if you don't, I'm sorry. Everyone else comments something differently. Yeah. Right? Andy, comment now. Andy, comment that. Yeah. You ready for the next one? You're two out of three, Silver. That's pretty good. Yeah. I'm yeah. ready. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're telling me yeah. I shit posted this? <laughs> so, um... I don't recognize this. All right. So, you're gonna so have it's just okay. So, with 2020, the community of memes saw a huge increase of memes in this format. Uh huh. What is the name of the app in which these are made and shared? Oh, okay, yeah, with the font, yeah, right? Yeah. So I made one of these. Yeah, he did. Yeah. Amazing. Okay, so the apps: A Whisper. That one. <laughs> but I, I want to hear the rest. All right. So Telenim, Watcher. Owly, and the the fake one was Dig. <laughs> okay. I don't remember Dig. I do Dig, remember Dig. Dig was a good one. It was an old one. Yeah. But yeah. Glad you know that. There's hundreds of these, and they continually make less and less sense. Yeah, because these always started with like the like the heartfelt pick. Well, not the heartfelt, but like the wholesome. Like it'd be like deep. Vibes. Yeah, it'd be you know deep, I mean? like, or like you know, it goes back to like the Tumblr, just girly things type yeah, vibes. Yeah, it's kind of like oversized sweaters, shit yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. And now it's which I remember the first one I ever saw that was like kind of brutal, like this was it was just a photo of a woman's fupa, and it said, "I'm cute in a obese way." <laughs> 
And I went, what is that? I was like, what is that? <laughs> Obese? Yeah! Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh man. Shit. All so right. yeah, three out of four, I'm glad. What, what? Moving on up? Yeah, next one. Oh, another class. Yeah. You will never mesh window with Gary. <laughs> So this is, uh, I learned throughout the history of this one, that it started off being like an actual thing, and now it's just used in contexts of... I'm sorry, I'm just so bad. Because <laughs> I love these... <laughs> yeah, they're so good! It's, it's like... always like, it's always like Peter <laughs> from Family Guy. Yeah, I know, because it was, uh, so first of all, this meme started, like, every meme, like, it actually being, like, an interesting commentary about something. Yeah. But then it turned into shit like this, where it's like, he will never, like, I don't know, hang clothes, and then it's yeah, a guy hanging yeah, yeah, clothes, yeah, yeah, yeah. and they spit in the cereal. Like, but then it's now, like, it's shit like you said, like, it'll be Peter Griffin. It'll, it'll be, like, people are literally scrolling the Lowe's website, just, yeah. like, looking for things. Like, damn, he'll never be a 2 by 4 <laughs> like, some shit like that. Holy shit, you ready for the, you ready for this? Yes. Alright, so this thick figure character, shown on the right, yep. was a drawing made by artist Bob Averill on oh. the Something Awful web forums. The original source of the image is from a Rage comic from 2007, which is a parody of a commercial. What food product is promoted in this commercial? Wow. So it is Cinnamon Toast Crunch, uh -huh. Reese's Puffs, uh -huh. Rice Krispies, yeah. Apple Jacks, mm -hmm. and Fiber One Double Chocolate Crunch Poop Inducing. Uh, it's definitely... Can you just really quick repeat C and D for me? C and D are Rice Krispies and Apple Jacks. Apple Jacks. And it is a parody, it is like an exact parody of like one of the popular, because cereal commercials were crazy back in the oh, day. Oh, for they're sure. They're dancing, it's they're insane. running. Remember the Frosted? Rap rappers would fucking kick down the door and be like, yo motherfucker, taste this cereal. Yeah, or like Frosted Mini Wheats, they're like swimming through an ocean of milk. You're like, what the fuck is this? Yeah, like, I'm not the fucking cannibalistic Cinnamon Toast Crunch guy. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna... Uh, when you were saying food products, what jumped into my head was Reese's Puffs. And then that was before I even know they were all going to be cereals. So I think I'm just going to go with my gut here, and I'm going to say Reese's Puffs. You are right. It's yes! Puffs. It was a parody of, like, you know, it was like Reese's candy. And then it was like, you you know, you can't make a cereal out of that. And he's, like, surprised oh, by the cereal. Yeah. And it's like, and then, like, he gets, like, really angry and starts, like, cursing. And, like, I, I found the original comic. I've, it's, like, I've it's never, like, 12 slides. I've never seen the, uh, the, like, the thing it's referencing. But for some reason, I can just picture, like, a little box of Reese's Puffs, right? There. Yeah, 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 yeah. It makes sense, you know. Because it was probably, in the commercial, was probably a kid who was, like, what? Yeah. Like, every 90s cereal commercial. <laughs> All right, last one. You ready? Let's do it. Really good. You only got one wrong, so I'm very proud of you. Ready? Right, let's see what we got. <laughs> Atheists, when they accidentally say, oh my god, instead of, oh my scientific research at the Atheist Convention. And then we have a half of this gentleman's face, <laughs> which I, I see him all the time, and it's always hysterical. Like, <laughs> all right. Oh, you ready? For sure, buddy. All right. So at the bottom, this screen cap of a bald man originates from a 2016 viral video where the man starts crying after smoking a blunt. Uh -huh. What is the official name of this video? <laughs> Smoked up for life. Uh -huh. Better off with blunts. Uh -huh. Oh Lord save me. Uh -huh. Thank God for my reefer. Uh -huh. Dumb stupid idiot bald guy. <laughs> So first off, I think it'd be great if you fucking switch a rude me into <laughs> and the e, dumb boss. E or E was like one that was like sounded dumb, but it was actually yeah, true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, I just love E too much. Man, can you repeat A and C for me? I think it's one. Of A those is two. smoked up for life, and C is Oh Lord save me with an exclamation point. I think it's Oh Lord save me with an exclamation point, but I also think it's smoked up for life. I'm gonna go with Oh Lord save me with an exclamation point. The name of the video is Thank God for My Reefer. Ah, okay. And I believe he even sa he says it in, in the, the video, video, but uh, he's like crying. Like, he's like violently crying. Like, you can't. Like... You can see like a little tear. Yeah, going he's down. crying. Yeah, he's like actually. Like, that's why the video. And I think, uh, 
It was like uh, like Breakfast Club or like World Star Hip Hop yeah. that like put it out and that's like it got like two million views or something. Yeah, like yeah. that's how it like you know he it became a meme for sure. Man, did I enjoyed that? <laughs> yeah, four out of six. Fun. That's not bad. Thank you. Thank that's you. not bad at all. I did my best. Thank you. Thanks everyone for tuning in to know your meme. Don't what spell it right. What were the ones you have those? Just what like... it was just the uh, explosum. Oh yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I asked what's the official name. Like all the other ones, I would have asked like, oh, what's the official name of the guy from the yeah, webcom? Yeah, you know, yeah, which yeah. can you guess it? I don't. Like serial guy. I was, oh, I was gonna do like right. serial Steve. For yeah, it's shit. serial guy. Yeah. It's usually that with a name. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Dylan. Mm -hmm. Know what you mean? That was fun. I mean, you know, spelled differently, but yeah. Still. I mean, I was looking like, and it was sad because like there were some where like I would look up like the history of a meme, and there wouldn't be anything, you know, because like some of these you would have like a, you would have like an eight paragraph thing, and it'd be like a Wikipedia page, right, mm -hmm. where it's like oh, there's different things, and you can click on it and it expands, right, and there would be some meme. It's like oh, this was shared in 2013. <laughs> you think about it. This got this some crazy like meme iceberg then. <coughs> Oh, 100%. Yeah. Without like a doubt. Lost meme media, essentially. Mm -hmm. Insane. Without a doubt. And I think it's really cool, because it's like, it's essentially just an inside joke, but like everyone gets it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Or you, if you get it, it's the funniest shit ever, yeah. or something like that, you know? Alright. Yeah, I can, uh, can talk about another thing I did recently <laughs> this week. Yeah? Yeah. What's up? Uh, actually, no, I don't want to talk oh. about another thing this week, because we just had a wonderful meme segment presented to us by Dylan, Yeah. and Dylan also presented something to me on this kind of meme trajectory earlier. Yeah, so this was, yeah, video. so I guess you could say vi the video has like 7 million views, so it's a viral video, yeah. so it ties it's, in. It's a film. documentary, let's call it what it is. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a piece it's a of It's a short film. documentary, 30 mm -hmm. minutes. Uh, which is short for documentary. Mm -hmm. made, made by uh, Noisy. Noisy. Very good publication. It is a uh, short documentary about the... I'm just going to say it for them. It, it's a short documentary about the Blackpool grime scene. Which is a small city in northern Britain. Yeah. yeah and, uh, and grime is a very popular, uh, you know, rap... Genre, not genre, but what do you, what do you call it? Rap style? A rap style, 8 bar, 16 bar, comes exactly. from London, and you know, exactly. a lot of, you know, very, you know, black British people usually are the ones that are like, you know, partaking in it. Mm -hmm. I remember the first grime rapper I found was Dizzy Rascal. Yeah, 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 me too. Yeah, Arctic Martins, that's how I found him. Sure. Yeah. And then I got into like Wiley. Wiley was actually one of my, like, I left him on one day in the background, mm -hmm. and he became like my top 10 artist one year. Is Slow Tie Grime? He's influenced by Grime, one hundred percent. I would say he's he's more. I would say he's more like alt rap. Yeah. But he, he a lot of times he sticks to the the same yeah, flow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I would say he's somewhat Grime. Yeah. Got it. But point is, we watched a documentary about the Grime scene in this small town of Blackpool. Yeah. Uh, going into it, so real quick, what the documentary more specifically is about is that it's about the three essential kingpins of the Grime scene. Yeah. Which, by the way, even though it's a it's a smaller city. They still can gain a following. Yeah, it's yeah. not like ten people. It's like you know, it's like a borough of New York City. Right? Yeah, 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 yeah. It's it's a it's a pretty decent size yeah, city. Yeah. It has a whole little p seaside pier and a shopping area and districts and shit like that. But the documentary is about the three dons they call them of the Blackpool grime scene. And when you hear that, you think <coughs> you're gonna have three thug dudes, you know, who are ruling the scene. The first man that they introduce is a man named. Uh, Afghan Dan. Afghan Dan. Yeah. And Afghan like. Dan... He's, he's a little humble. He fits the description. Despite the fact that he's a very humble guy, and he, he's been through his walks of life, but he went to jail, and he smokes weed, and right? He, yeah, he, I mean, yeah, he smokes a lot. He was uh, he was in the foster care system in yeah. Britain, so he's been, you know, roughed he's around a lot. He's 21, right? Yeah, yeah, he's, 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 he's a little bit older, yeah. So this is the first guy that they introduce, and not only do they introduce him, but he's apparently like this figurehead in the community. Big social media he's, game. He's kind of like one of the first in that area to really do it, and then he inspired a lot of the newer people who I'm about to get to. Which, to, uh, to do which by the way, they don't, they get into Afghan Dan first, but they definitely show a clip yeah. of the second person who's in the documentary, mm -hmm. and this man is... Wild. Yeah, let's let's talk a little bit about Little T. Yeah, so Little T is a twelve year old boy, which they open the documentary they open his part. Like the he, first the time. The documentary opens with him freestyling in front of the camera. Yeah. 
and he, the first couple of bars are like, all right, but then he says some, ve like, like you hear the voiceover say, they're saying very obscene things. So, yeah. It, it, and I know that Bobby, when he watched it, he probably said, oh, yeah, they're not going to, he's 12. He's yeah, not going to yeah, say yeah. anything that the, the, bad. The doc starts with him literally being like, the sun rises, I get up in the car and I leave, and then I'm right, like that. Like, mm -hmm. he's just saying a story or whatever. And then, like, Dylan says, they say, but not a lot of people know that these kids, like, da 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 yeah. And then it cuts to... Uh, the kid rapping about, uh, deep-throating your mother. Yep. Uh, and making her, f having sex with her three times, mm -hmm. then four times. Four times, round four. Round four, he refers to it. And, and she, she's saying no more, like, she's begging him to stop. And this is a 12-year-old And that's all said in, like, three bars. This is a 12-year-old white child with curly blonde hair. Yeah, and it's, like, styled, styled. You yeah. know, it's, like, it's like the he popular style. He looks like style. a One Direction member. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But much younger. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, and this is, this is my favorite part of the documentary, right? So, they, they like I mentioned earlier, I preface, there's three dons of, of this yeah. of this scene, right? Mm -hmm. So they start with Afghan Dan, and they do his whole spiel, they meet his friends and his community, right? And then they move it on to Little T. Where do they find Little T? <laughs> Little T, I can't make this shit up, he's sitting on top of a jungle gym in like a playground. He's on, he's on the playground with two of his young friends. Yeah. Like just hanging, just out, hanging out, having a good time on the jungle like gym. Like some fucking recess shit, no joke. And then the guy who does the documentary daps him up. And he's like, all right, let's go. Yeah. And he hops off the jungle gym and just leaves with like this 25-year-old black dude. Yeah. It's the fucking funniest thing, yo. You feel me? It's the best. It's amazing. So yeah, this this kid, Little T, he fucking, he rapped some crazy obscene shit. There was like some minor controversy where he, he rapped the N-word. And he also sentence. said the word rape. Yeah, too. he also made a verse where he basically said he was going to like hypothetically rape somebody's little sister. Yeah, so. And after those verses came out, basically there's like a part where the documentarian like asks him specifically about that. And he's like... He ta uh, the documentarian actually asks really good questions. He does, yeah. He actually does, like he, everything is like calculated. He'll be and like, to oh, further this. that, I give like credit to Little T too because here you have like this 12 year old child and they say it multiple, multiple times in the documentary but they ask him about those times and he's like yeah I was really young yeah, I regret and it for somebody like who's 12 years old to say to realize yeah that. I was really young like bro like you're already really young yeah, 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 at yeah, least yeah, you're yeah. Like, that, yeah. and that's I think that's super important like for sure you really can't like cancel someone who's 12 because they don't know any better and what's you just have to teach them that that's wrong and then they'll learn yeah it. and what's funny is later on in the documentary Afghan Dan who was who that n-word slur was like referring yeah. to yeah first place like first of all afghan dad didn't even really see it as like a like a like a thing a beef or anyway he, and he even like acknowledged like you know you're younger you're gonna make mistakes yeah and he, he even says like the fact that you're realizing it now just shows that you have and he even said problems. he's like i didn't realize my mistakes until i was 16 yeah right? and he was in jail and, whatever, and it's like right? afghan and, and to further that point it's like this guy afghan dad is like actually like a really humble like dude and the recording stop oh shit We're back. Found out we weren't fucking recording for like the past 15 <laughs> plus minutes, and that sucks. I looked over. Uh, but we were not letting that go to waste. Unfortunately, no. you had to listen to that last little Woo. bit off the camera audio. And it's recording now. It is. It's still. It's recording right now. Okay, cool. Uh, I'll do another healthy sound speed. <laughs> yeah. And uh, yeah, not for nothing, the uh, in-camera audio for the Panasonic cameras isn't terrible, so it's just going to be not this, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. but it's just going to be like... You yeah. know, and it'll cut back to amazing quality, and now you're like, damn, we really appreciate what Joystick does and their amazing quality with all their content. Yes, exactly. Uh, but to further where we were going within this documentary, yes, we meet up with Little T, right? He talks about his past and stuff like that. But Little T has beef with the third Don. Of, and uh, the main beef. Yeah. It's like, it's like, it's like it, the main, yeah, it's like the only beef. Yeah. In fact, the Afghan Dan was like, oh, that's fine. In right. fact, this guy who makes the documentary refers to it as the Drake versus Meek Mill of the Blackpool grind yeah, scene. Yeah. That's how <laughs> huge it is. Yeah, it's just hysterical. And then I realized, like, I remember when I was at home yesterday, I found this last night, by the mm -hmm. way. This is like a new thing to me. That's why I had to show you. But... What really got me was I looked up how many views and listens these people get. Millions and like 10 million. Yeah. Like that is insane. That's why it's so big because it's like the the girl. I forget. What's the girl's name? 
uh, well, that we didn't even say who it was. <coughs> oh. But the third Don of the game yeah. is a young lass by the name of uh, don't even fucking remember her name. No, <laughs> is it, fuck. Is it Sophie? It's so something. Yeah. Right. We gotta give respect. We gotta give credit to the yeah, black. Gotta put Brian respect scene. on her name. But anyways, little T and her go far back, and it goes back to a, just give a shout outs to Soph Aspen. Yeah, yes. and she got uh, respect in the game by uploading an Adele cover, which Bobby noticed, and I didn't even pick up on that the first time yeah. watching it, which I thought was really interesting. Yeah. And but anyways, uh, the beef stems to a rap bar regarding them, they're each other's mothers. Yeah, and that's where the beef, where like she says, like, oh, and they even interview. Little, little t's t, mother yeah. about it oh yeah and an even better part about that is very interestingly like you that he brings that up it's a it's an important question you see like this 12 year old kid rapping and you're like where are the parents like what yeah. do they think about it and you know he asks the one like the mom straight up like what are you is your you know your thoughts about him like the rape and all that stuff and she's like oh when i heard it i hated it like yeah, 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 yeah disgusted yeah. by a little yeah, kid. yeah 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 but then, like, what's funny is apparently this kid, Little T's older brothers, <coughs> do this shit. And that's, like, apparently how he got into the mm-hmm. scene. But the whole time that he's, like, interviewing the mom, his older brothers are just, like, fucking watching his ass from they're the in, upper window. They're windows. in wife beaters just yeah. posted up at like the, the windowsill. Like the fucking mob. And yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah, yeah, damn, yeah, 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 like, yeah. it's low-key insane. Go on, then. Go on. <laughs> you know, they're just like... In. And I was just like, and he makes a joke, and I'm like, damn, like that's actually great. Like they're like looking at him, and uh, and yeah, so fucking so fastman and this kid little T have like this insane beef. They, so they met and, and they uh, they go after each other, video after video, bar after bar. Is that kind of imagine like beefing with the twelve year old? Yeah, bro. right. And, and they're both hysterical. like super young, like super young. Yeah. I'm pretty sure she's also like thirteen something. Yeah, like she's that. like fourteen something like that. Yeah, yeah she's young. But uh, it's just this crazy fucking thing. I really like those like slice of life documentaries, like these these parts of like the world. And it's these, a like, really big t- like, insight. You yeah, know? and then they they shape it up to make it seem like this big narrative, which it, in fairness it is. It's mm-hmm. just one you never really thought you'd get around to to learning about yeah, or hearing. And it's actually super wholesome because they actually coordinate. Not only do they coordinate a phone call with Wiley, who's like one of the biggest grime artists out there, mm-hmm. but then they coordinated with one of the local bars to have Afghan Dan perform form and it was a packed house and they had to close it because it reached max capacity yeah which is like that's that's huge that's awesome yeah, yeah. and regardless of how R- regardless bad, of how good or bad yeah. afghan dan may be live uh, or not they they you can understand that hey they know the words to this song and they actually show that, that that's actually my favorite part we didn't talk about that when they introduce afghan dan and they meet like his friends it's his fans yeah like people are coming up getting photos with him yeah like imagine being so popular as an artist that like you're only big in that neighborhood yeah but, but everyone's want fucking, yeah, yeah and they all fuck with you and they're all trying to get a photo like even before that before the show and shit like that he's just walking down the neighborhood and people notice and mm-hmm. they're like afghan dan and yeah, they're like yeah, yeah. and they're the saying you cheeky bastard yeah, which is like yeah, a big yeah. line of his song and they're like yelling it at him and he's like he's saying it in the camera for people like i'll give this to my mom and would it be wild to say that sophie aspen is the most talented of the three of them sophie aspen is by far the most talented because she can not only can can she sing but then she's like super humble about all of it she's really mature which is kind of funny because you see this like personality where she's like fuck you i don't know i'm buck this shit yeah yeah, yeah. but then like she talks and she kind of like understands like what her small level of fame gets Mm -hmm. her and she's like just looking on to get more opportunities and stuff like that and the documentary ends ends pretty wholesomely with uh, the documentarian like successfully not only getting Little T and Sophie Aspen to meet at a, together at for a the, fish and ship shop for which the, is like the first best. time like these these two yeah. industry titans have never met before the Biggie and Tupac and they hate fucking, each other <laughs> yeah. and they hate each other and it's low key like I like that I yeah, like yeah, that yeah, they're yeah. not just like. Oh hi, you know what I mean? Like they're low key beefing, yeah, man. And of hard. course, like you can tell, like the little kid is like he doesn't really know how to handle it, so he's just kind of like little T's just sitting there, and he's like, "I'm still mad about it." Yeah, like, he's like, he's like kind of like he doesn't know really how to handle it, but he's like, you know, you know. But not only do does he does this guy get these two fucking kids to actually finally meet up and talk about it, he actually gets the two of them and Afghan Dan together to do a cipher. So it's like kind of cool. It it's comes wholesome, full yeah. circle, yeah. Mm-hmm. So it was a very cool little mini doc that Dylan was able to show me. And I think there's like, there's not a part two, but there's like smaller like edits where mm-hmm. they throw in like extra clips yeah, and other yeah. stuff. That's and cool. F- yeah. So I, I got to check those out because I feel like there might be some like fan made content, mm-hmm. which is even worse grime. Like there's some people that actually can't keep on the beat. 
so I feel I, I feel like there's some amazing things ready to be there. Can you do me a quick favor? Yeah. Can you see what that t- number on the camera says up yeah. there? What does it what does it say? What, the, the the time? Yeah. Yeah, it says fifty two fifty. All right, cool. No, it's yeah, forty six. Yeah, so that's unless- close. Well, actually, I'll cut one last thing in before we get into JMM territory. I was going to say the last thing I did this week was yesterday. I went to the movies. Hell yeah. Which is one of my favorite things to do. I love the movies. And I went to go see Venom. Let There Be Carnage. Or maybe, I think it's Let There Be Carnage. Just wanted to like briefly touch on that. So I don't want to do a Bobby, you know, uh, what, what is it, movie review segment? Because yeah. uh, I think Jerry and I are actually going to go see it again tomorrow. Mm-hmm. So I think it'd be cooler to have like Jerry here, have a secondary perspective of it. So we can like opinions, et cetera. Talk about it, right? But I did want to briefly talk about uh, the things that I liked about mm-hmm. the movie. And, you know, not to, this, here's the thing. A lot of reviews are saying that the movie is good and not like amazing or like, you know, good, mm-hmm. not great. And that's kind of true. It's better than the first movie. But then there's like this whole thing where, uh, you know, who Andy Serkis is. Yeah, I know. Andy so Serkis. he directed it. Oh, cool. So it has like this uh, has like this humor to it. Like, the first one had funny moments, but, like, now Venom has, like, a lot of one-liners and shit like that. Oh, cool. So, I'm still, like, trying to get used to it because, like, I, I kind of grew up seeing Venom as, like, the big, bad, scary villain. And now mm. we're trying to, like, get used to, like, rooting for him But, as I mean, it's anti-hero. his movie, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you kind of have to make exactly. him, like, so, likable and see sure, from sure. his side. Uh, that makes sense. But what I really, really wanted to touch on, and it's kind of hard, uh, is the post credit scene of the movie. Okay. Can I spoil it for you? Yes. So this is a huge spoiler. I have put spoiler alerts on the channel before, but if you do not want this to be spoiled for you, <coughs> the Joystick Show has chapters, okay? Mm-hmm. You go to the description. I'm giving you mad time to do this right now. You go to the description down below. Next you hit, chapter. You hit subscribe. You hit like. Yeah, it if got you didn't do it at the beginning yeah, of the show. Hey, hey, the bell too. The bell? The bell. Don't the bell, forget. hit that. Hit that. And you're going to see chapters. And right after this chapter, is going to be one that says Jam Yam of the Week. Yes. You click that one. If you don't want to get spoiled. Click that timestamp, and then you won't have to deal with what I'm telling you. Correct. Perfect. Awesome. Let's get into this. Boom. I have never seen a movie in my life that was overshadowed by the post credit scene. Wow, really? Until yesterday. Crazy. Mm-hmm. Let me get into it. Uh, you didn't see Loki, right? But mm, or you did see? Yeah, Loki. Well, we we talked about it. Yeah, 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 yeah I watched. You, it. you did see it. Yeah, I wasn't. Oh, I wasn't the biggest fan of it, but per, I, per. I know about the all you need multiverses know. and all that. Yeah. So the movie Venom, Let There Be Carnage, ends with uh like basically Eddie and Venom, Eddie being Venom's host, yes. having to go on the run. Correct. So they go to like you know very cliche. They're on the beach. The sun is setting, and that's the end of the movie. It's Venom and Eddie oh, sitting wow. on the beach. And they're just talking about what they're going to do. And they're like, I guess we're going to go find our new place in the world type of shit. Like oh, interesting. On, yeah. Okay? okay. Credits come. And then it's one end credit scene. It's the mid credit scene. Well, the only post credit scene. Funny enough, it is Eddie and Venom in bed watching a telenovela. Indicating like they're in some South American country or some shit like that. Very cool. They're like in some dingy. It looks like the back of a store or something oh, so it's like really, that. Oh, it's yeah, like, it's like it's shitty. He's on like a mattress on the floor, and there he's watching the show, and he's talking to Venom, who's part of him essentially. Yeah. Uh, and they're having a discussion about the telenovela, and then Venom basically says something along the lines to Eddie of that like Eddie wouldn't be able to comprehend like the the years of history and shit that the symbiotes symbiotes being the alien species the venom is mm-hmm. has had to go through throughout like their lifetime or whatever okay yeah so eddie is basically like all right then why don't you like show me right okay so after eddie says that venom is like okay and when venom is about to show eddie there's a huge flash of light and the room starts to shake and everything starts to change and it's the loki time bang wow yeah okay the room that he's in, the dingy back room on the mattress, completely changes. And now he's in a resort in a fancy bed what with the, the fancy fuck? curtains with a nice beach view. And he's super confused. He doesn't know what's happening. And on the television is J.K. Simmons, J. Jonah Jameson talking about Spider-Man. Tom, wow. And Tom Holland is on the TV. Wow. So the post credit scene is lit- it's literally Venom jumping into the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Yes. So now they're completely connected. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Insane. Completely. The it, only it's time, it, it's it's probably the last time since like Endgame that I've been in a theater and people were like around me were like, oh my God. Yeah, like, I mean, that's a huge insane. reveal. Yeah. It was insane. And yeah. it's like you have all the big, the big actors in there too. You have Holland, you have yeah. Simmons. Yeah, you have everyone. And it's cool because... Uh, 
a photo got released a little while back, like maybe a week or uh, maybe it was further back, but I saw it about a week or two ago. Of, about a week ago. <laughs> about a week ago. And it was of Tom Hardy uh, with some other guy, but he's wearing the Spider-Man No Way Home production hat. So it was like, well, why does he have that low key? And now it's like, low key he might actually be in the fucking movie it's kind of crazy i think yeah he and what's be. oh the last thing i wanted to mention about this and i love that i finally get to talk to somebody about this because it's like ugh. the what was very interesting about this post-credit scene is the the picture like i said it's j yeah. it's jk simmons and he's like peter parker da, 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 and then it shows the picture of tom holland and venom looks at him and venom like notices him like he recognizes him and he's like this one this guy or something like that and then Eddie like makes no. He's like, "What do you mean?" And then it gets cut off by the guy who actually owns the resort room, like coming in, and he's like, "What are you doing in my room?" And Eddie's like, "I don't know." And that's how it ends. <laughs> that's funny. But actually. the crazy thing is, I low key think that Venom recognizes Spider Man because of the whole Tobey Maguire Venom situation from that universe. Yeah. So I think that that's gonna tie yeah, into yeah, the movie. Yeah, it crosses over. And okay. I feel like that low key, in my opinion, I feel like that really just hits the nail home that Tobey Maguire is gonna be in. I think Spider-Man he, I think he'd be weird if he wasn't. I think yeah. he's 100 percent in the movie. I mean, also there was like another thing where he's working on a, a new movie called Babylon. I think he's acting in it, but he's also producing it. Mm-hmm. And apparently, an actor in the movie just straight up asked him if he's in Spider Man No Way Home, and Tobey was like, "Yeah." <laughs> so like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, it's yeah, probably yeah, gonna yeah, come yeah, true. Yeah. Yeah, I don't. Was, I mean, I don't think he's gonna be like the main part. You know, he's not gonna yeah. be like a th- huge thing, but he's gonna be in it, and everyone's gonna go crazy. Yeah. So that was that that post credit scene. Very very satisfying. And what was cool is I heard before I went to go see the movie, everybody was talking about the movie having a mind blowing post credit scene. So mm-hmm. I was like slaving to go on like the day it came out. So thankfully my girl and it was, was worth free it. And I could, oh for sure yeah. yeah. But it also kind of sucks because I had like the secret like you're actually the first person I've told yeah. because nobody's seen the movie yet. So mm-hmm. it's like, fuck. So uh, I got and I like I can't and even then I care less about like the crossover shit and more about like the solo movie. Yeah. So it's kind of cool that you did that because I could still watch the movie and be like you told me the ending but it's like I don't care I can still watch that movie. Oh, it has love nothing it. to do with the movie. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, you don't even perfect. know like why. Yeah, yeah, I don't even know the but... plot. I don't know anything, so that's mm-hmm. perfect. And like, and we'll, like, I kind of hope that we, you know, me and Jerry will be able to go tomorrow so that we can talk more about the movie next week, mm-hmm. not about the post credit scene. But I'm sure we'll get into it again because it's that mind melting of a post credit scene that I don't think Jerry will not be able to like talk about. Yeah, it. yeah, he'll be, like, he'll be like, yeah, you know? yeah, it's crazy. So yeah, it was a fucking awesome watch. I mean. The movie was a fun watch. It's pretty short too. It's ninety minutes, which is kind of good short. for me. Good for me, hundred percent. No, I mean Andy Circus made it that way on purpose. He actually made mm-hmm. it so that he wanted it to be a. Uh, what are you looking at? Huh? Mm-hmm. Looking at yourself in the camera. Mm-hmm. I'm pretty hot. Fucking uh, Andy Circus said he purposefully made the movie shorter because he wants it to be like a nonstop like thrill ride the whole mm-hmm. way through. And inter- I'll get more into that next week. But I I have a funny like perspective i think that may have ended up hurting the movie a little bit Ooh. but we'll get back to that teaser maybe week. yeah a little teaser when i talk little, more in depth about, about what i Ooh. thought about venom and to you know to leave you on more of a cliffhanger i'll give it a solid 7.5 out of 10 might okay. change but when we get next week but okay that's what i think of the movie and that's not counting the post credits. No, post credit scene, scene, post credit like, scenes is 10 out of 10 it's because it's probably the craziest <clears throat> post credit scene i've ever seen so yeah for sure that that, that that that's uh that post credit scene is Memphis. Yeah. And now that we're we're past that, we're gonna get into Jamie M territory. If you clicked the timestamp, welcome. You know, yeah. you, you didn't Hello. get that spoiled for you. Yeah. yeah. But you should definitely go check out uh Venom Let There Be Carnage. So you yeah. can see what we just talked about for the past like five mm-hmm. minutes. So yeah. Hell yeah. But now it's time for Jamie M of the week. Correct. So uh are you gonna start? Am I gonna start? You can start. I can start? Yeah. Perfect. Cause uh my jam of the week is actually tied to the movie <laughs> Venom. And in fact the song is called Venom. Venom. It's by not, it's not, Venom. It's, imagine, and it's, he's 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 a Blackpool grime rapper. Yes. <laughs> Doesn't that sound like what he's made out of? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, 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 like yeah. Venom is made out of Blackpool grime. Yeah, like, yeah, 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 yeah. He was generated from yeah, ooze, <laughs> like some crazy shit. Just fucking uh, no. It's a song called Venom, and it's not by Eminem. It's not that Venom song. It's by Little Sims. Funny enough, it's he, it's not it's not by Around Circular Candy. No, it's not. It's not, it's not Skittles either. I really thought it would be. But uh, no, it's by Little Sims. It's a song that's on the jams for like a year or two now. But what's actually funny is the song is called Venom. So the the song starts off with like some cool uh, like violin string thing. Mm-hmm. So I heard it in the movie. 
And then in my head, like in my chair at the movie theater, I'm like, I know that song. And I'm like putting it in my head. I'm like, the song is called Venom. The movie's called Venom. Mm-hmm. And I was like, that's why they picked it. But she's also in the movie. <laughs> yeah, rapping she's the performing it. That's, cool. re- that's really sick. That's n- um, not even a spoiler. It's just, <laughs> it's just a little thing. It's like a minute in the movie. All right. We have another chapter <laughs> called we've now split up the jam and the yam into two different chapters because the jam now contains a spoiler. So welcome back. This is the yam. You're fucking idiot. <laughs> Jam of the Week is a little sense yeah. by Venom. What's Yam? <clears throat> so Yam is a song that it's an artist I'm going to see live in a couple of weeks. Ooh. So the song is Gemstones by Shinigami. Oh, Shinigami. Yeah, which is, he's not Asian. Is this your third Shinigami? Is it? Yam of the Week? Is it? I think I, it is. I, it's second, I think. Second? Who yeah. was the one that you did second? You did two Yams of the Week. I thought it was Shinigami. Whatever. Point is. Oh, it was Alden. It was Alden. Yeah. I'm sorry. But Shinigami, I definitely did a song yeah, before sure, yeah. and it was one of his uh it was an instrumental mm-hmm. so basically he used to be an emo rapper and now he makes like electronic mm. but also takes some of that influence still mm-hmm. and uh yeah i'm going to see him live in two weeks a really good song very groovy what's the name again uh gemstones, gemstones. two yeah. words lowercase styling fire yeah. As most uh, independent music is yeah. nowadays, it's just make it lowercase. Yeah, make it lowercase. Or make cool. it uppercase. Cool, cool thumbnail. <laughs> Slow it down. Speed it up. <laughs> Throw some weird punctuation. In. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> make them go crazy. <laughs> make it like an Xbox gamer tag. We have to throw the three in there. XX cool XX. Or it's like an underscore, yeah. Thanks for joining us for episode 58 of the Joystick Show. Yeah, that was a uh, great time. I want to apologize for those technical difficulties in the middle there. That really bums mm-hmm. me out a bit. To give had... back, we gave you a longer episode. Yeah. That's but, like our way of giving back to our fan base. It kind of sucks because like that was such a f- great segment, and it didn't go to waste. People still saw it. It was still great. I hope mm-hmm. you guys enjoyed it. I really enjoyed it. Yeah, and that. there's going to be more because I have, I by the way, I found 200 plus memes Not only that, that I completely like, lost. If I may say so myself, the way that you presented the segment, the whole fakey answer, very great yeah. i love the unique spin you brought bravo my friend it's just a, some great things you can expect here in phase two yeah. and we will talk more about that next week. hell yeah for sure some cool restyling in fact we will be talking heavily a about new phase theme two for the week. channel overall we don't know exact but it's different in fact i think we're gonna go upstairs and talk about it right hell now. yeah you're gonna see a huge revolution for sure and uh make sure to comment down below right and comment your favorite meme definitely hell yeah and you have to have one. Everybody yeah, has everyone a has a favorite meme, meme where it's like this one where you're like, even if you don't know the name of it, you're like this one. Yep. Mm-hmm. This. Just explain it. And we yeah, will yeah, know. Yeah, 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 yeah. And if anybody will know, Dylan will yeah. know. So that's what's important. And I'll have an opinion on it. Because so there's some trash memes. <laughs> so thanks for watching. Mm-hmm. And uh, do you have any last words for us, Dylan? Keep being a meme queen. Like Mr. Clean. <laughs> Thank you.